in monastery darkness. By the light of one flashlight, the old shrine room waits in silence. While above the door, we see the terrible figure, fierce eyes demanding, will you step through? And the old monk leads us, bent back, nudging blackness, prayer beads in the hand that beckons. We light the butter lamps and bow, eyes blinking in the pungent smoke, look up without a word, see faces in meditation, a hundred faces carved above, eye lines wrinkled in the hand-held light, such love in solid wood, taken from the hillsides and carved in silence, they have the vibrant stillness of those who made them. Engulfed by the past, they have been neglected, but through smoke and darkness they are like the flowers we have seen growing through the dust of eroded slopes, their slowly opening faces turn toward the mountain. Carved in devotion, their eyes have softened through age, and their mouths curve through delight of the carver's hands. If only our own faces would allow the invisible carver's hand to bring the deep grain of love to the surface. If only we knew, as the carver knew, how the flaws in the wood led his searching chisel to the very core. We would smile too, and not need faces immobilized by fear and the weight of things undone. When we fight with our failing, we ignore the entrance to the shrine itself and wrestle with the guardian, fierce figure on the side of good. And as we fight, our eyes are huddled with grief and our mouths are dry with pain. If only we could give ourselves to the blows of the carver's hands. The lines in our faces would be the trace lines of rivers, feeding the sea where voices meet, praising the features of the mountain and the cloud and the sky. Our faces would fall away until we, growing younger toward death every day, would gather all our flaws in celebration to merge with them perfectly, impossibly, wedded to our essence, full of silence from the carver's hands. If only our own faces would allow the invisible carver's hands to bring the deep grain of love to the surface. If only our own faces would allow the invisible carver's hands to bring the deep grain of love to the surface. If only we knew as the carver knew. If only, if only we knew as the carver knew how the flaws in the wood let his searching chisel to the very core, we would smile too, and not need faces immobilized by fear or the weight of things undone. When we fight with our failing, we ignore the entrance to the shrine itself and wrestle with the guardian fierce figure on the side of good. And as we fight, our eyes are huddled with grief and our lips are dry with pain, if only we could give ourselves to the blows of the carver's hands, the lines in our faces would be the trace lines of rivers. Feeding the sea where voices meet, praising the features of the mountain and the cloud and the sky, our faces would fall away. Our faces would fall away until we growing younger toward death, growing younger toward death every day, would gather all our flaws in celebration to merge with them perfectly, impossibly, wedded to our essence, full of silence from the carver's hands. Full of silence from the carver's hands. say as a United Methodist minister, I'm um, invited and exposed to lots of different spiritual growth opportunities um, and I avail myself of them. You know, I go to monasteries and I've gone to seminaries and go to conferences and spend time trying to nurture my own spiritual life through spiritual disciplines. But at some point, all of it was, it, it became narrow because it was going in the same circles mm -hmm. you know and I knew that mm -hmm. I knew that God was bigger mm -hmm. and that he was inviting me to see uh, the world through an, uh, the eyes of someone 
that saw beyond, not even denomination, but beyond even maybe traditional Orthodox Christianity. And yet you're safe because you have the language and you have the background and you, and you, respect, um, you respect the Trinity and you respect Christ and you respect my faith. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you've integrated that into a greater and deeper understanding of the way the world works in sort of a magical way. Um, mm. God is alive and magic is afoot. <laughs> I have a deep sense of gratitude. Um, and it feels good to get in touch with that. Mm. I mean, I had lots to be grateful for before I came here, but I couldn't feel the gratitude. I would speak it. I'm grateful for this. I'm thankful for this. But now I've got enough stuff out of my way, enough heaviness off me, so that I can actually live out of the gratitude. So I live gratitude at a deeper level. And so I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, something wonderful about coming here. And it's very different, honestly, than I thought it would be. It, um, it's more simple. <laughs> I think from the from the video and from the online, it looked kind of fancy, you know, like sort of upscale-ish. Hmm. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But when I came here, it's much more simple. And it's more earthy and more grounded. And, and so are you. I mean, you're just really hmm. so approachable and warm. And So anybody watching this, I would say, put aside your your fear or hesitancy and, and come and go deeper. It is like a rebirth. Yes. Right. I do have a new wine skin. Yeah.